We now have the pleasure of being joined by PGA Tour legend Davis Love the uh, Third, DL3, as we affectionately put it here <laughs> as fans. And I think Kyle and I could both sit here as fans uh, and, and be in awe of your accomplishments, most recently captaining the team to a President's Cup victory. And I'm sure you're aware, but eight months from today, T balls will be in the air in Rome, uh, vice captain of this coming uh, Ryder Cup. Can you give us an idea of what the process is like eight months out when we're talking about a Ryder Cup? Well, it started um, 12 months ago mm -hmm. for Zach Johnson, and we've been on a kind of a roll on this since the 2014-2015 um, Ryder Cup Presence Cup where we're more involved, and it's a year-round thing for us. It's not like, oh, we're just going to show up in Rome and see what happens. <laughs> Zach's been on this. Literally the week after he was named captain, one of our local chefs in Sea Island called me and goes, hey, Zach just called me and hired me to go to Rome. What do you think I'm going to have to do? That's how far ahead he's thinking. That's awesome. And um, it's so much. I'm just honored. Since 2010, Corey Pavin asked me to be on the Ryder Cup team with him. I'm just so honored that after my playing days, I still get to hang around and go to a Ryder Cup and President's Cup. We were, at, we were talking earlier about just your sort of legacy in the game, and I think that – there's a there's a subset of people of fans maybe younger that only know you like regarding the Ryder Cup and maybe don't know about the PGA Champion your career all these different things. Did you envision that becoming part of your legacy? No, I um I came out on tour to see if I could win a golf tournament and make some money and as my dad always said, see how good I could get. Yeah. And I never even thought about Ryder Cup. I never even thought about Hall of Fame or I never even thought about being on the PGA Tour board. But my dad, as a PGA of America member, lifetime, and giving back to the game, doing teaching seminars to bring on young teachers, doing everything he could to grow the game, has just kind of instilled in me to give back. So um, I was, I'm the only player that's ever been on the board of the PGA Tour five times. I've done a lot of helping um, other captains and captain teams because I was given such a huge gift, I want to give back. That's the way Steve Stricker, Zach Johnson, Tiger Woods, Jim Furyk, that's all we want to do is pass it on to the next generation because we've been so blessed. Yeah. Having seen those types of team events from both sides, player, captain, vice captain, is there ever a longing to hit the shot or have you gotten away from that? Oh, my gosh. Watching those guys <laughs> play in Charlotte, watching last week Davis Thompson, who is my tournament director at the RSM Classic Sun, watching my son on – over in Thailand on scores, I want to play so bad right now. <laughs> I'm coming off of a of a wrist injury. They just said yesterday I can chip and putt, so I, I'm excited to get back. And that's amazing at almost 60 years old mm. that I still have that competitive desire. I've got a few little records that I'm chasing. I can okay. I can be the I can play the most PGA Tour events. If I play about 15 more, I'll pass Mark Brooks. Um, and I want to play. Bay Hill and Hilton Head and some of those tournaments that have been so good to me one more time. So I'm trying to get back in shape to a few more starts on the regular tour and then go uh, watch Steve Stricker out there win every other week. <laughs> what's the what's the record for most events? Eight is it eight? Eight hundred and two or three Mark Brooks has. Okay. So Jay Haas is at seven ninety nine. He's he's next on my radar and then I try to get past Mark Brooks. Did his because uh, he played in the Zurich last year, did that count as his there's strange things in stats. But <laughs> Tell Jay, me about Jay it. Jay got to 799. They subtracted a President's Cup from all of sure. us. So he went back to 798. And then he played in the Zurich and got back to 799. I said, no matter what you do, you can't get to 800, can you? <laughs> so um, we try to convince him to play. Go play one more hill. Yeah. Go play one more Zurich and get to 800. But then, I, of course, I'm going to go buy him. Yeah. That's, that's Lord willing, I stay healthy. Uh, we were just talking to – we had Tom Watson, and we were talking to him about the idea of a one-club challenge. They did that in a match with Tiger and Rory and all those guys. Was that something that you ever practiced, just playing a, playing a hole with one club or two clubs just to try to uh, put different shots into your arsenal? Yeah, well, my dad came up under Harvey Penick. He played at University of Texas for Harvey. Harvey was his mentor as a teacher. So one thing that Harvey would do, like to Crenshaw and Kite, he's – give them an eight iron and tell them to hit it over the bunker or you give them their sand wedge and tell them to hit it real low from the side of the green. So my dad did a lot of stuff like that. So he would take me out and say, all right, we're going to play this hole with a seven iron. We're going to play today with no woods, things like that to challenge me to hit different shots, not just hit driver wedge on every hole. Yeah. Taking a look at what you've accomplished and engaging maybe with your legacy in the game. How does that 
light that fire inside of you to stay hungry, to put those numbers in front of you? It sounds like you still have the competitor spirit within. Do you take time to look back at what has been accomplished? Yeah, I look back a little bit just um, being thankful. Um, you know, I, you have to turn the page in this game because as Bob Rotella taught us, if you win four or five times a year out of 30, you're doing really good. Yeah. So you have to get used to not mm -hmm. winning. Um, so I kind of learned to, to not dwell on the past that much. But, um, yeah, I, I look back now when I was 30 or 40, maybe I didn't look back as much. But now I look back and, wow, so many things I've gotten to do because I'm uh, the ability to hit a golf ball. Places I've gone, people I've met, things like that are just incredible. To that end, that relationship with failure, let's call it, relative failure, how do you think that served you in your life? Well, I think you uh, put it in perspective. You know, golf is just a game. Um, I've had a lot of, you know, crazy, tragic things happen to me in my, in my personal life. Um, people, we're just normal people and mm -hmm. things happen. So, again, I've been blessed um, health-wise. I've been hurt a few times, but I'm still, you know, playing golf at almost 60 years old so looking back now i i wish that i had done things differently i wish i had worked out more you see these guys today they're just in incredible shape they're they're pro athletes now um a lot of things i would have done a little bit different but um i've also had a great life off the course family friends things that i've gotten to do so um all in all, I'm very, very thankful looking back. As you've gotten older, what have you found? Your, I'm, I'm, I'm very fascinated by what people are obsessed with. And I'm curious, some, for some people, it's the swing, the mechanics of the swing. For some people, it's architecture. For some people, it's history, whatever it is. What, what have you found yourself gravitating toward in terms of your obsession? Well, architecture. Okay. Um, our company is very busy right now building, um, renovating golf courses. But I'm obsessed with the heavy equipment. I like to drive it. Okay. Pete Dye gave me a piece of advice way back. He goes, oh, you're not a golf course architect. I go, well, yeah, I guess not. He goes, until you get on the equipment and you learn how to build it yourself. So every time there's a machine sitting with nobody on it, I try to get on it and learn. But I really, I like things outside. I like cooking barbecue. I like hunting. I like fishing. But now yellow things and green things mm -hmm. i like to get on them and run them so it's a good day at a golf course design site if i get out there and can push some dirt or dig a hole or something i'm going to ask a question far too general here but we were sort of uh, pining over what makes a good golf hole in your opinion are there tenants core tenants that make a good golf hole well if it's memorable okay whether it's easy or it's hard um, one thing i'm learning from from our architect scott sherman is you have to have a balance and I've been, got a great education recently looking at a lot of Pete Dye golf courses with Steve Winslow from the PGA Tour um, that came up under Pete, from Alan McCurick, McCurick Golf Company that came up under Pete. And they'd say, look, Pete says we have to have a short hole and then a long hard hole. And we have to balance the lefts and the rights and the cross the lines and down the lines. I love that kind of stuff. But if you play a golf course and you remember a lot of holes then it's a great golf if you play a golf course and go yeah i think it was hmm. a lot of par fours you, you want something that grabs your attention but you need a balance of easy and medium and then some really hard holes to to challenge you have you ever thrown a tee at anybody on the driving range yes <laughs> Was it your son? Yeah. Do you have a bucket of teas we can throw? I have a tea around. Right. I've been throwing it. It just recently been, got thrown. I've been throwing it at Joe all day. Who, uh, no, I think I think Rory just had a tea throwing uh, incident. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that's what I'm yeah. referencing. When people aren't looking, acorns are are good because there'll be a lot of those on a golf course, especially in the fall. Uh, and teas. Well, sorry. Last one for me is, so I, I've been watching obviously John Rahm do what he's done recently. To me, Rahm is almost. <clears throat> the most underrated guy in the game because I, I look at people and I'm like, you don't, you don't understand how good he is. Like you, I know you know that he's good, but you don't understand how good he is. For you, who's the most underrated guy in the game? Um, well, I love watching John Rahm. We played together some uh, back in like 15 or 16 when I was playing a lot of PGA Tour events. I was really impressed with his game, and obviously we knew about him coming out of yeah. college, and he's going to be great. And um, he's an always in your face kind of guy about Ryder Cup, so I really like I really like John. But um, I don't know if Rom or Cam Young or those kind of guys can be underrated. Mm -hmm. But Cam is my guy right now. Obviously, Will got hurt right at the wrong time, or he would have been right there with with Cam in the Presidents Cup and, the, and in the playoffs. But 
I'm blown away yeah. with how Cam Young hits a golf ball. It's incredible. It, I stood there with his dad one day and watched him hit ball. I think it was in Detroit, Rocket Mortgage. He's unreal. I think he's got the brightest, the most upside, even though he's already had a couple good years. Yeah, yeah. Davis, before we let you go, I have to know, is the menu set for Rome? That was the first call. I think that that we have gotten so deep into this pre- Ryder Cup, President's Cup thing, <laughs> that we took a chef to Paris. <laughs> we took a chef to Rome, two of the best countries for food in the world. But <laughs> as, Jim Furyk, as Jim Furyk explained, we're a pro sports team and mm-hmm. we want to control. We will get good food at the club in Italy, but we want to um, – our guys are, are set in their ways. Mm-hmm. They want an ice bath after they play. They want protein shakes when they warm up. They want the same things they have at every other tournament in the year. So we've gotten a little bit better at, um, at building our team before we get there. So, yes, it's pretty much set. Well, if you wonder where the team success has come from as of late for the U.S., wonder no more. <laughs> Davis, thank you so much thank for taking you. the time.